many ways, Go Vacation is the Wii Sports game I've always wanted. A big open world you can run around in and explore, a massive variety of attractions ranging from scuba diving to horseback riding, and a vacation resort theme thrown on top of it all. At its best, this game is really something special, but unfortunately there's also a lot of rough edges that I just can't ignore. An overall unpolished feel to the gameplay and the repetitive activities hold this game back from its true potential. But despite all of that, I still really like this game. It's proof that this sort of open-world vacation concept works extremely well, and currently there's no other game that gives you an experience quite like this one. So today I'll be covering this game and everything it has to offer, the highs and the lows, as well as some of the differences between the Wii and Switch versions. Now let's dive into Go Vacation. This game is the third title in the critically acclaimed Wii Ski series that includes legendary titles such as Wii Ski and Wii Ski and Snowboard. Seriously though, this game is actually pretty great. But before we get into things, first we have to make a character. You can choose between an avatar type design or use one of your system's Miis. So obviously I went with a Mii so I can trick myself into thinking I'm playing a Wii Sports game. But sadly, using a Mii means you can't use any headgear, which sounds oddly familiar. I would maybe use an avatar if you could fully customize them, but for some reason you can only choose between a handful of pre-made ones, which is super lame. Of course I wish this game was full of only Miis, but it is a third party game so I'm glad they even included the option to use a Mii at all. And even Nintendo's own Wii Sports series can't seem to focus on Miis anymore. Now let's get into easily the most interesting and enjoyable aspect of this game, the huge open areas you get to explore. Kawawi Island is split up into four main sections. There's the marine resort with sun-soaked beaches and bright blue waters, the city resort full of sky-high buildings and tons of trick ramps, the snow resort, a giant snow-covered mountain with plenty of paths to discover, and the mountain resort that has a laid-back country feeling with a big, pretty lake in the center. These four themes are perfect. They cover every base when it comes to vacation vibes. It helps keep the game feeling fresh when the environments around you keep changing so drastically, and it allows the mini-games to have more interesting themes. You may be wondering how there's a tropical sunny location on the same island as cold snowy mountains, and uh, don't ask questions. Between playing the activities, you get dropped back into the open world of each resort, where you can run around freely with no time limit. Each sport can be found somewhere around the map, with a dedicated person waiting to be talked to, but they can also be selected from the main menu. I don't know why, but I just love this sort of thing. It's great in games like Nintendo Land, and it's great here. It just gives the world a more tangible and realistic feeling when you can physically travel around to find each attraction. And each one is roughly located next to where the activity actually takes place during the gameplay, which is a nice extra bit of world building. You know that feeling when you get off a roller coaster at an amusement park and wander around trying to decide what to go on next? That's the sort of feeling Go Vacation's open world gives me. Because as great as all the super high intensity and exciting parts of Vacation are, the quieter moments in between them are just as important. And with this game, those moments in between activities are actually a lot better than the attractions themselves. I can just wander around aimlessly for hours, even if there wasn't anything to find. But thankfully there are some things to discover scattered across the landscape. There's seven treasure chests per resort, which usually have new outfits in them, so you can customize your avatar even further. There's also multiple photo spots to find, and while they don't have much point, it's still fun to try and find them all. Another pointless but fun thing you can do is order some food and just watch your character eat it. I actually weirdly like these moments as they let me slow down and enjoy my surroundings for a bit. You can also get your own customizable dog that follows you around, which is just the best. But I do feel a little bad when I zoom off in one direction and my dog desperately tries to follow. There are even some open world specific quests to complete like helping this old man retrieve his belongings in the marine resort or this trading quest in the mountain resort. You can quickly travel around the map from the menu, or actually walk to a dock, ski lift, or train station to get a ride across the world. These vehicle cutscenes are great, even though I rarely sit through the entire thing. But every once in a while I'll just put down the controller and watch my Mii be slowly brought up the mountain in a ski lift. Each resort has unique vehicles you can explore in, from skateboards to off-road cars. These make the actual exploration gameplay of each resort feel very different, and they're designed to fit each location. Although I do wish the motorcycle was available to use in the city area since that's one of the most fun ones to control. Each vehicle lets you pull off various tricks and spins by shaking the controller and using the right stick, d-pad, or bumpers. The trick system is actually surprisingly complex and deep, and I still don't fully understand how to pull off the coolest tricks. 
The visuals of this game aren't anything mind-blowing since it's just an HD port of a Wii game, but the art design is pretty strong so the world can look very nice at times. However, there are a few parts like the city being in dark shadows or the boring mountains of the marine resort that don't look so great. But the landscape is very well designed. It all flows together naturally and is fun to travel through. There's also lots of people walking and riding around on various vehicles around you which helps make everything feel alive. Small details like that awkward little hop you do when riding in a snow tube, people getting mad at you when you run into them, or the way the snow gets more packed down the closer you get to the bottom all make Kawabi Island feel like a real place. There's also some fantastic voice lines that play out of the speakers that do so much for world building and immersion. The castle that's coming into view off the starboard bow is an important historical landmark called Shanghai Castle. This year marks 1,000 years since its construction. I also love how you can see the giant central mountain peak from basically anywhere on the island. I'm not kidding when I say that more than 75% of my playtime in this game is spent in the open world. Not even really doing anything, just messing around on the vehicles or going in big circles. No matter how many times I go flying down the mountain in a snow tube, it will still always be fun to do it again from the top. The way I look at it, this is actually the main focus of the game, and the activities are just the side content. The open world is like a giant amazing playground, so if you have some creativity and a playful spirit, you can spend hours just messing around and exploring, even though there isn't really that much to do from a gameplay perspective. You can even explore in split-screen multiplayer with friends and family, which is a great addition. Online multiplayer is a big missed opportunity though. Connecting with friends online and exploring together would have been incredible. Once you complete the stamp dash, you unlock your very own private villa which you can fully customize. They totally didn't have to add this in, but I'm so glad they did. Unlocking all the furniture you want to use is a great goal to work towards, and building your own little perfect vacation house is pretty fun. There isn't quite as much customization as I wish there was, but honestly it's impressive they included this at all. You can also walk around and see other people's villas which is a nice touch. Now let's move on to talking about the differences between the Wii and Switch versions of the game. Once I learned that the original actually has some exclusive content, I picked up a copy and tried to notice as many differences as I could. While there aren't very many, I still think they're worth mentioning. The opening movie is very different between versions. The Wii version has a much more charming intro with a lot more personality, while the Switch one feels basic and safe. The slow build-up to the plane flying towards the island is so much better than the weird first-person jump out of the plane that seems to be copying Wii Sports Resort's opening. Maybe there's some technical reason they couldn't bring the classic intro over, but I wish they could have found a way. The Wii version is heavily based around motion controls. Basically everything you do in the game is tied to shaking the Wii remote around from controlling the vehicles to the activity gameplay. This was all translated to button controls on Switch, which makes the whole game feel a little stiff since it wasn't designed for that. The animations can feel a little sharp and janky when using buttons, since it's supposed to be controlled by smooth motions. And there was a huge missed opportunity to add in free camera control with the right stick. You can only move the camera around when you're standing still, and it feels very dated. A modern dual stick camera system would do so much to make exploration feel better, and I really wish they could have added that in. I get that many of the tricks are mapped to the right stick, but even if you only had camera control when on foot, it still would have been a massive improvement. But overall I think the button controls are a positive upgrade, since it gets pretty old to shake all the time to go faster when using something like a skateboard. Although button controls are a lot worse when it comes to the pointing based minigames like rifle shooting and water gun battle. Motion controls are still an option on Switch when using Joy-Cons, although they're less precise. Because of the new button-based control method, three minigames from the original were cut that used the Wii Motion Plus. The Sword Fighting, Dance, and Ace Pitcher minigames. Sword Fighting is a huge loss, since that's legitimately one of the best ones in the whole game, so it's a shame they couldn't find a way to bring it to Switch. Dance is confusing, but very charming. And Ace Pitcher… well, actually I'm fine with Ace Pitcher being cut because that one sucks. But to try and make up for the missing minigames, the Switch port did get some new content, including a new fishing minigame that's pretty fun. There's also new costumes, dog breeds, and much more. But probably the biggest difference between the two versions is the core progression system. On the Wii you earned silver and gold keys to unlock stuff for your villa, with silver keys being unlocked through the activities and gold keys having super weird and specific unlock requirements. But on Switch there's a brand new level progression system where everything you do gives you points, which will give you a silver key each time you level up, and gold keys have been removed entirely. I think this is a massive improvement, because now simply exploring and messing around in the open world will reward you and help you level up. There are balloons everywhere that give you points, and even just doing tricks will give you points too. And it seems like the gold key challenges have been converted into daily challenges that give you a huge amount of points. 
This new system is a lot simpler and more efficient, and I'm glad they updated it. The Wii version has much faster load times with an entirely different design, where you can point around and place these little dog stamps. It's kind of a shame that it loads so fast because I could keep myself busy with the dog stamps for hours. On Switch there's loading screen tips instead, and the load times are sadly much longer. Like way too long. Probably one of the worst parts about playing Go Vacation on Switch is how long it takes to load everything, and there's loading screens between almost every menu selection. It's super clunky in both versions to customize your clothing and gear, but on Switch it just takes even longer. Some activities have some quality of life improvements on Switch, like skydiving being a lot quicker and less tedious. And the only other major difference I'll mention is the menu, which has been totally redesigned. For the most part I like the new menu, but the old one has its own charm. The music for each one is very different, with the Switch version having a more relaxed, tropical vibe. while the Wii menu is way more upbeat and lively. Both are great in their own way. That isn't every single difference between the Switch and Wii copies of Go Vacation, but that should cover all the main ones. I definitely think the Switch version is the definitive way to play this game, but the Wii version has its own unique charm. I wish I could teleport back in time and hand 10-year-old me a copy of this game on Wii. It would have blown my mind. But I got this game day one in 2018 when it came out on Switch, and that was a great way to play it for the first time too. Now let's talk about the actual activities themselves. There's over 50 sports and activities in this game, and if that sounds like a lot, it's because it is. And each sport also has multiple different modes, like simple races or high score based ones. But not all of them are created equally. Some have tons of fun modes and options, while others are just kind of one-trick ponies with very little content. I would list them all off, but that would take forever. I like that they expanded the scope of this genre and included so many different attractions, but there are just too many to keep each one feeling fun. This is a major case of quantity over quality, which normally I'm not a big fan of. But the sheer amount of content is somewhat impressive, even if some of them fall flat. There are some real standouts like surfing, motorfest, water gun battle, dog sledding, and kayaking. Some of these are actually a lot of fun and decently replayable. But there's also some forgettable ones like the trick-focused minigames, river rafting, and snowman making. And then there's sports like mini golf, which usually I would really enjoy, but it's just too unpolished to be enjoyable. Like the gameplay of this pie dodging one is pretty fun, but man why do they keep saying the same thing over and over again? I think this game would have really benefited from cutting 15 to 20 of these activities and focusing on polishing up the remaining ones. But that's not to say there isn't any fun to be had here. These attractions can be really enjoyable at times if you're in the right mood. And overall I think there's probably more good activities than bad ones. I love all the opening animations for each activity. These cram so much personality into just a few seconds, and I honestly wish they were a little longer with more focus put on them. Sadly, a big downside of the minigames in Go Vacation is the music. There's only like 4 songs spread across all 50 activities, which means you hear the same few songs constantly. The songs themselves are pretty good, but when they get repeated so much it gets pretty grating. Maybe it's just because I played all of these back to back to get gameplay, but by the end I was losing my sanity hearing the same race theme playing in the background. It doesn't matter if you're zooming down ramps on roller skates or racing a rally car in the mountains, it's gonna be the same song playing. This is probably just a result of the lower budget, but I really wish they could've included more music because this game would really benefit from it. These four resorts have endless potential for themed music, and it's a shame they weren't able to capitalize on that. One of the reasons I prefer the open world exploration to the minigames is because there's no music playing at all when you explore. Instead it's just the natural sounds of the world around you, which is a lot less repetitive. Thankfully the stamp dash setup doesn't require you to play through every single activity. You only have to play 20 to unlock your villa, so most of the problems with the activities can simply be avoided altogether. Okay, I know I'm being kind of harsh on these minigames, but it's probably just because I replayed all of them for this video and couldn't help but notice the many weak points. When compared to the perfectly smooth and satisfying gameplay of something like Wii Sports Resort, the minigames in Go Vacation often fall short. But I'm guessing they had a much smaller team with less resources, so I can't blame them. And on a surface level, most of them are at least decent, if not fun. This game is at its best in the open world, and that's because it feels like a fresh and unique experience every time while exploring. 
where the minigames just aren't strong enough to have super enjoyable replayability. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in Go Vacation. This game has so much content to enjoy, even though not all of it is perfect. The biggest thing I take away from this game is the open world format, which you could probably guess since I won't shut up about it. I can spend hours doing nothing but creating my own stories and enjoying my virtual vacation. So much of my Switch Sports Resort concept video I made was inspired by this game, and I can only imagine what a modern, from the ground up version of this structure with the proper budget could look like. In some ways it feels like this game is made for me, and it should be my dream video game experience. But there are enough problems that hold it back from being one of my all-time favorites. However, I still love this game for everything it gets right, and its Wii-era rough edges are sort of charming in a weird way. If you're able to look past its shortcomings, there's a lot of fun to be had with Go Vacation. This game has all the right ideas, just not the perfect execution and level of polish that I know is possible. But at the end of the day, this is still one of the best games in this genre, and it even manages to surpass games like Nintendo Switch Sports for me personally because it's willing to take risks and try something new. Now head down to the comments and let me know what you think about this game. I'm sure lots of you grew up playing it and have tons of nostalgic memories. I really enjoyed covering this game and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see ya in the next one.